Diary. Friend. Comforter. Savior. Amen. Can I have an amen for that church? Amen. Amen. Now to your left, sorry, to your right. Same question.
only good things? Everything. So, 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 doesn't that mean then that, that when we think of Jesus, we can go to Jesus and tell him anything, good or bad? Amen? Okay. Then I have answers like, you know, friend, you know, uh, loving, caring, mild, meek. And, 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 and these, are all rel- these are all relationship words. These are words that, that make us feel comfortable. If I describe Jesus to someone that doesn't believe, then they would be like, okay, I want to meet Jesus. But herein lies the problem. And the enemy of souls is not just a liar, but he is the father of lies. Now, you guys know that I like stories, right? Do you guys know that so far? And I like analogies and illustrations because I'm, I'm not trying to be proud. It is not easy for God to get through to me with this Bible. Can I get a witness? Sometimes I read the scripture and it just doesn't make sense. Sometimes I open the Bible and, and sometimes it goes over my head. And in my years of Bible study, I have learned to keep, keep things simple. So if I am studying the science of the gospel, I must study the hardness of the Bible to make it simple to you. Does that make sense? Don't make the Bible mean intellectual and study it like you're a scientist and then try to break it down to me how you study it. You're meant to study the Bible so that the more you study it is the more simple you must be able to break it down. Amen? Amen. Okay. So let's not lose our train of thought. We're talking about how would we describe Jesus? And we just mentioned that that liar. He's not just the liar or a liar, but he is the father of, of lies. Stay with me, church. He's the father of lies. And the father of lies is always lying. He was a liar from the, from the beginning. And he will stay a liar. So, can I make a simple story just to show you where we are planning to go and we have to keep on there? Now, you might be here today and you might just like, let's say, yogurt, yogurt. Yeah? So, who there likes yogurt? Yogurt. Okay, be proud. Okay. So, so now, yogurt is not the natural entity of yogurt or yogurt, is not yogurt. Do you understand me? The first substance was not yogurt. So, so, so yogurt doesn't make yogurt. Talk to me, help me, help me. So, what do you need to make yogurt? You need milk. Amen. Now, the enemy of souls, he knows that you know you have hungry people, and 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 the only thing that can cause them to get light. Let's just say it is yogurt, right? It's yogurt, and and they love. 
the same as when he talks to his God? It was, it was more or less in the same, yes, but you can see there was a difference. So then he would say, friend, lover, diary, but then we would have omnipotence. Father, oh, oh, no, no, sorry, not father. Holy father.
child. I don't know about you. We were speaking about this yesterday while the young people were at, you know, uh, at Genevieve's house and we were speaking about the issues of the youth and how we can overcome them. And one thing that came up, and it is right into the sermon, is that when I was growing up as a child, did my father love me? Yeah. Amen. Right. Of course he did. My father loved me. He loved me with everything that he had. Amen. Yeah. Okay. But the question is, there were times in my life where I did not see that love. Are you guys hearing me today? I did not see that love. Am I saying that my father didn't love me? No. But I did not see that love. So when I did not see that love, did I, church, did I know that my father, I was flesh? Did, you know, did I believe that? Yes, I did. Did I know that I was of him? Yes, I did. Were we blood, relation? Yes, we were. But did that make the difference? No, we didn't. There will be times when I would be scared of my father. Did my father love me? Yes, he did. But, but there was times when I would be going through hell in my life. And guess what, church? I couldn't go to my father. So guess where I would go? My mother. I wouldn't really go to my mom because this was man stuff. And I wouldn't go to my friends because they can't advise me. I advise them. That's how I was. What can my friends tell me? <laughs> They're not even going through the thing that I'm going through. So where I would go, I would go to the street. And the reason why I would go to the street is not because I came to my father and, and, and I turned to him away. It was because I believed that I went to my father and he turned me away. So it seemed now that when I was going to the street, when I was taking my anger out on the street, out on females, innocent females, when I was taking out my anger on the world, you know, on my school teachers, when I was taking out my anger on the environment, on society, it was because I thought that my father didn't love me. I'm trying to let someone know today. God is on your side. He's on your side. Let's tell the story. Very deep. Very, very, very deep story. This story, I would always say that, even though you hear it from me, you might have heard it before, but this story needs to be told again. Someone needs to know that before we can dig deep into the Bible, before you can understand what God has to offer, you need to understand who God is. Amen? Amen? You need to understand that God does not want to be seen as so high, so high up that you need to do something before you can go to see him. It is not biblical. It is not in the Bible. But in my church,
that since Tom lived off a country road, it would be safe, it would be safe to back out onto the pavement and practice turning corners into the train. Each trip took us further and further down the road, faster, faster, and the turns became more exciting. And we found that the best passenger ride was enjoyed on the running boards. This was a dangerous place to stand, but this was where the excitement was. On the fateful last ride. As the car careered around the corner, almost swiping the fence on the right side of the car, Tom and Larry leaped off the running board. They leaped over the fence and they rolled through the cow pasture. From my safe position on the inside of the curb, I know. 
yourself, amen? If you believe that I've been an elder for so long, and I've been a pastor or a deacon or a Sabbath school superintendent for so long, the only righteousness in you is of God. So God is trying to make it clear today that we here today could even be thinking that we are something that we are not. And until we understand that we are hurting, many of us are hiding our pain. Many of us ain't know what we're going through things that hurt us so badly that we are even scared to make a plain to the brethren. But we don't have to make a plain to the brethren. For we can go and come to the throne of grace where we can find mercy. We can go and come to the throne of grace. We can boldly come to Jesus Christ. We can boldly come to the Father. Because the Father sent Jesus Christ. For the word says, for God, John 3, 16, for God so loved. It was because God loved the world that he sent Jesus. You say you love Jesus and you don't love God. That makes no sense. And I'm making a claim now, people, that someone is hurting today. Someone is hurting today pretty badly. Someone needs to recognize and understand that God is on your side. When Tom's father was coming down to, to, to see what was going on. Now let's think about it logically and carefully. Now please follow me. Please, please follow me. Even if you're earthly parents, even if you're earthly parents, always loves you to be. Because he's angry that you sinned. We think that. 
God is, is, is sad and, and moaning because you sinned. And now because you sinned, God is now angry at you. But the reason why God is sad, the reason why God is crying, the reason why God is mourning, the reason why God is pleading, it's not because He's angry at you. It is because the sin caused pain to the Father. So when I sin, I am hurting the Father. But even though I am hurting him, guess what, church? He still loves me. Amen. Are we condoning sin? No, sir. But I'm making it clear. Even if you sin today, even if you sin five minutes ago, even if you sin in this very minute, this is the story of the gospel that Jesus came to die for sin. Amen. So that you can have life. So that you can live. But we need to believe.
right now is there is not your friend. All he needs you to do is just then listen to his foolishness and by beholding it will change your life. But Jesus Christ has an arm today. And he is saying the devil is calling young people to join his army. And if the world has power, how much more power do you think God has, church? And I'm making a claim that God can save me. I do not care, young people, where you've been. There is nothing you can tell me that I cannot relate to. There's no deep, there's no deepness or, or road on the street that you can tell me, well, 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 I used to be, no, no, I've been places, but I'm here today. I am here today preaching the gospel all because God was on my side. And I'm making a call. <laughs> I'm making a call before I read these two texts. John 3.16, we own the text. But do you believe it? We're appealing. We know the text. The devil is good at making us remember these texts. For God so loved the world that he became that he gave his only begotten son. We know the text so well. But do we take hold of the power in this text? Do we see this Bible text as something that is just to be remembered?
This is what we need. Lord, save us, or we can't save ourselves. And please bring us back to home where we will learn of you again. All we are going to bring now is Jesus Christ, the friend of sinners. Jesus, lover of our souls. Friends have left us. Foes have sold us. But he is the one that brings us home. So we say hallelujah. What a savior. Hallelujah. What a friend. Lord, you're saving us and you're keeping us and you're loving us and you're drawing us. We know that you will never leave us or forsake us. For you are loving us until the end. Take us home, Father God. Send your angels down to guide us and protect us. And allow the Holy Spirit to dwell with us and allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in our 